Thank you to everyone who's joining. We're going to give a few more moments for uh, to allow some stragglers to come in. Um, we have a chat that's open. We might ask you a few questions if you want to use that to answer. We also have a Q&A box. You'll see the Q&A option at the end. We'll have an open section for Q&A. And for anyone who's calling in, if you have additional questions and you're not able to uh, chat in, no worries. Um, we'll be sending a follow-up email with the pre-recorded session to everyone who signed up for the webinar and everyone who's attending. Um, and we'll, if you have any additional questions, you can always ask then. So we'll be beginning in a few moments. Thank you again for joining. All right, okay, thank you. Um, today we're going to talk about how to operate a successful dispensary in Maryland. So thank you everyone who's here and who's joining. Um, again, we're going to have a Q&A at the end if you have any additional questions and uh, we will be sending you this pre-recorded session. So what will you take away from today's presentation? So we'll primarily be focusing um, on top customer concerns for dispensaries operating in newly launched state uh, sanctioned programs. GreenBits has a lot of um, experience helping our customers um, in these new markets, and we're gonna share with you what we've learned from their experience, what you can expect. We'll then go into key metric reporting and Maryland uh, Medical Cannabis uh, Commission labeling requirements and some things that you'll need to know that's Maryland specific. And at the end, we're gonna highlight one of our customers um, who is currently operating in Maryland and is also using GreenBits. So who we are, who's speaking with us today? I'm your host and I'm your moderator. My name is Tracy and I'm a customer success manager here at GreenBits, um, who's going to be going over a little bit about the GreenBits brand and also going to talk to you about Maryland specific requirements is Matt Beckley. He's our director of business development and the customer we're spotlighting today is Andy Grossman. He's been kind enough to join us. He is a GTI partner and he's also a fellow dispensary owner. Um, so I, I know you may have seen a few um, chat bubbles at the bottom. I'd love to know who we're talking with today. I can see everyone's names. Um, so I'd love to know, you know, how many of you are currently up and running, have a dispensary and are um, yeah, running in Maryland already? Okay, let's see. And how many of you um, uh, have applied or have just gotten your license? Okay, this is great to know. Thank you for everyone who has taken the poll. All right, so um, thank you. So for uh, I'm going to let Matt Beckley take it away. He's going to tell you a little bit about the GreenBits uh, brand story. He's our first, GreenBits first non-engineering hire. He works with business development and product, and he's been working a lot with our early customers in Maryland. And he's going to tell you a little bit about the GreenBits brand. So Matt, if you want to take it yeah, thank you, Tracy. Um, and thank you, everybody, for uh, joining here this afternoon uh, and spending an hour here with us. I uh, greatly appreciate your time. Um, wanted to give a brief update uh, or kind of background on GreenBits um, and how we got started uh, enabling a world of retail cannabis. Um, GreenBits was formed uh, in the summer of 2014. That's when we started working with our first retail customers. Um, and we launched service in Washington State at that time. Uh, so that was kind of the birthplace of our company. Um, one of the things that we did differently here at GreenBits and that really kind of uh, helped us get our hands on some of the biggest challenges facing the industry was um, we kind of approached technology from the perspective of building a point of sale around the concept of uh, state integration um, and compliance automation. Um, 
you know, between the time of the summer of 2014 uh, and about a year and a half later, we had um, quickly established a lot of really strong partnerships and uh, captured about 80% of the retail partnerships in Washington state um, with a lot of hard work. Um, about a year and a half after, uh, after our launches, when we started working with metric, um, and expanding our service into some of the metric markets. Um, and that also kind of got us some exposure to, um, pure medical stores, um, or dispensaries. Uh, and we started picking up some new learnings there. And that kind of brings us up to, uh, where we're at right now, where we are, um, supporting and expanding into Maryland and building partnerships there. Um, we wouldn't be where we're at right now if we didn't have um, a really awesome team. We're very, very proud of, uh, of all of our passionate teammates that we have uh, working next to us. Um, a little bit about them. So at this point, GreenBits is a little bit more than 50 full-time employees. So <laughs> in the last uh, about three years, we've grown from four to 50. Um, and that's presented some pretty interesting challenges um, and uh, uh, growing um, our team uh, internally. Right now we have a support staff of a little over a dozen, um, two fully staffed product teams um, that are building new features and improving the product. And we'll be bringing on board a third product team here shortly. Um, over the past three years, we've kind of collected um, a really great group of the best and brightest minds, both from within the cannabis industry as well as from without the industry. Um, we've hired some uh, great folks who have actually worked in dispensaries or worked at other technology companies in the industry. Um, and then you'll see here on this slide, um, we did compete in a TechCrunch uh, competition in San Francisco, and that was a really great uh, opportunity to showcase our solution to the world. Um, and that video is actually available if you Google TechCrunch and GreenBits. Uh, highly encourage you to check that out. Our two main offices um, are in, hey Tracy, could you go back to that previous slide? <laughs> Our two main offices are uh, in San Jose, where our headquarters is at, and then in Portland, Oregon. And then over there on the left-hand side, um, you know, every day we, we work based off of our core values, and you can kind of see some of those values there. Um, definitely very, very focused on, uh, on our customers. A um, little bit more about kind of uh, what our product is and what it does. Um, most people will associate our, our product as a point of sale system. Um, but it really kind of all centers around helping uh, our customers manage the live inventory in their store, whether it's selling that inventory um, or making sure that it's accurate or reporting it to the state. Um, and that's the same whether you're a medical dispensary or a recreational store or a blend of both. Um, so that's kind of the core of what we do right now. You can see some of these metrics. We're working with about 800 customers that are all licensed uh, cannabis dispensaries across the country. Um, and then across all the point of sale deployments, we're doing um, a little bit over $2 billion in financial transactions per year, just to kind of give you a sense for the volume. We have uh, very passionate customers. Um, and I think that, that a lot of that comes from uh, how closely we work with them to make sure that the solution fits their needs. You can kind of see some of these um, responses here from our customers, just to name a few. Um, and I know that we have some very happy customers in Maryland so far that have said some things very similar to this. Um, so it's definitely kind of a core way that we operate here at GreenBits, working very closely with our customers. Um, we think that's about the only way to build a solid product um, is really get on the ground and uh, see what day to day is like for our customers and make sure that the software is making their life easier. And with that, I'll hand it back to, to you, Tracy, um, to talk about some of the top concerns for brand new dispensary owners. Thanks, Matt. So as a customer success manager here, my goal is to not just understand our product, but to understand the industry. And the best way I know how to do that is to listen. So after hundreds of phone calls within each of our markets, um, I've helped to identify some of the biggest challenges our customers typically face when they're first opening a dispensary in a new market. So the first one is uh, we know, and something that um, some of our customers know, it looks like one of uh, our attendees is currently up and running, so you will know for sure. And five of you have just received your license and one you recently applied. So um, you may be feeling this, and I know a lot of our customers have felt this, that running a cannabis dispensary is terrifying. 
And it seems like there is an endless list of things you can lose your license for. And some of the um, ones our customers tend to focus on when they're very first opening is you can lose it for underage or invalid patient sales. Um, you can lose it for overselling to a patient. You can lose it for not tracking inventory in real time with package IDs and submitting it to the state. And what's, I think, uh, even more terrifying from a lot of the owners um, that I speak with is that this is all in the hands of your hourly frontline employees. So I'm going to go through uh, some of these and, and um, talk to you specifically about what's at top of mind. So uh, yeah, the daily state reporting is something that you all probably have a lot of questions about. Um, I would say the biggest concerns our customers are ha have is not going to be able to report on time. Not only do you have to report every sale that you have associated with each pack package ID, but you have to do it in real time. Some of our states is at the end of the day, some of our states is in, in real time. And people are worried about doing it inaccurately. Um, you'll send something over that doesn't accurately reflect what's in your store. And just the, the overall time that's involved in making sure that the two are uh, in uh, sync is overwhelming. And not only does you have to do it accurately and you have to put the time in, but you also have to focus on adjustments and changes to your inventory and you have to make sure everything is consolidated in real time. So this is really a top concern for most of our customers as they're starting out, as they're opening up and trying to find resolutions to it. The other top concern that customers have, especially in medical only markets like Maryland, is patient check-in, right? So you want to be able to make sure that the front of your store, that the line is kept small. But not the only way that you can do that is if you ensure the validity of the patient information during check-in. You don't want someone being able to come in who's not a real patient, who doesn't have a valid ID, um, or worse, has an expired ID. They've come to you before, but it's expired and they're still able to get in. Um, and you don't want to hold up the line just by the checking the age of your patients too. So you really are, are focused on faster check-in and preventing long waits in line. And once they're inside your store, um, you know, you're focused on overselling um, and you're focused in, on, and especially your bud tenders um, have a fear of overselling. Uh, and so when they're at the point of sale, you don't want to first put your bud tenders at risk. So in a lot of states, and I believe in Maryland as well, Matt will get into a little bit more, it, they, they can put themselves, not just your license at risk, but they can go, they ha are at risk of jail time. Um, also, it's, it's difficult if bud tenders are fully focused on staying compliant, and making sure to not oversell and double checking, it's difficult for them to do what they do best, which is to be good sales reps. So it takes away the focus of uh, the product that they're selling and the focus of delighting customers and really puts the focus on, uh, on compliance. And obviously the biggest fear that you guys have for overselling is losing your license, um, losing business, right? Uh, losing the investment and the time and the heartache that you put into getting your license and maintaining it. And the last largest concern that our customers have um, and it really ties into compliance, is, is tracking inventory in real time. So you have these package IDs, the state makes you submit directly seed to sale tracking, and you want to organize the inventory how you see it, not just based upon this package ID. So being able to, to have control over and run your store the way that you want, I would say is a very big challenge for any customers who are starting out, especially if you have a retail or inventory experience. Um, and just being able to reconcile between what you have in the back of your house and your inventory, what is on your sales floor, but and making sure both of those match at all times with what the state has. Um, being audited at any time is a very real um, fear of our customers. So making sure that the two of these, the reconciliation between your inventory and the state is very important. So the question is, you know, how, um, oh, Sorry about that. I don't know where that went. <laughs> Give me one second. Small glitch. Okay. <laughs> so the question is, how does GreenBits solve these for you? So as a uh, dispensary owner, the priorities that you have kind of start at the bottom and kind of go up. Your very first concern, what we've seen, is compliance right it's first compliance 
and then operations, and then growth. And if you don't have compliance and operations, and operations to help you stay compliant, then it's very difficult for you to maintain this compliancy. So what GreenBits helps you do, and what Matt is gonna talk about, and what um, Andy is gonna talk about, is really how GreenBits covers that for you. So as a new dispensary owner, you can focus on operations, and you can focus, more importantly, on your growth. So how do we do this? We have an automated compliance system that helps you do state reporting in real time. All right, we have, uh, so not only will you run your point of sale every day, your bud tenders will ring up a sale, but GreenBits automatically reports that sale and the patient limits directly to the state on your behalf. So our customers are able to lean a lot on GreenBits to solve that first issue so you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to double enter it in two systems. And traceability itself, with GreenBits, we give you the ability to be able to barcode, put SKUs on it however you want, and be able to ring up a product and have it link back directly to that package ID. So no matter how you divide your inventory, you are able to submit it directly back to the state. So you can run the inventory the way that you want and with scanning the product, it will flow through this systems traceability system and you will have that two-way sync because of the state uh, reporting that we have. We also have I, I think, and, and Matt can go into this a little bit more, a more robust way to enter your taxes than anybody else that I've seen. Um, you're able to decide whether or not it's an, uh, marijuana only, whether or not it is uh, something for patients without excluding patients, um, and you can really set it up exactly as you want, which right now may not be that important, but as taxes continue to get more complex, you'll have the ability to go in and change it and have full control over it. And I would say the biggest money maker that we have is um, a way that it's integrated in the system is transaction limits. We set the transaction limits based upon your states. Um, each of our state has different transaction limits and we stay up to date with it. So right now, green bits in Maryland and in all of our markets, we set it based upon the you know, product type. So flour has a certain amount, concentrates has a certain amount. And at the point of sale, your bud tenders will see a warning to prevent anyone from selling over those limits. We will prevent it from happening. So it takes the fear out of them you know, accidentally missing over selling to a customer. And we do that, all of that is automated and all of that is built into the system from the get-go. It's something that's in our standard offering. We also focus on being able to provide you operational efficiency. And how are we able to help you stay effective? Um, one, we built in a, the receiving process is automated. So if you accept your um, manifests in the state, it will automatically populate in GreenBits. There's no need to double enter, okay? So it's once it's in the state, it's here within GreenBits. We also are able to sync, you know, every sale that you have is in real time. So we take away the fear of auditing um, and we provide you with tools and some great suggestions on how frequently you should audit and we should give you a way to compare side by side and most importantly, be able to make adjustments directly in our system. So you don't have to make adjustments in the state and also in your system and have the two asynchronized. What GreenBits offers is a way to, for you to make the adjustment within GreenBits and have those adjustments in all of the reasons that metric and the state have given and report it directly back to the state. So that allows you to have real-time reconciliation with the state system. And that's something that nobody else offers. That is a GreenBits exclusive um, trait. And the last thing that we offer is system security and customer data. We have an incredibly secure system. Um, we have a great article on our help site if you want to get into the nitty gritty of it. I know some people are very tech savvy. Um, but the most at any time you could potentially lose is two to three minutes of data. You will not lose your data. You will not ever lose access to your data. And we pride ourselves on having a strong security. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Matt, and he's gonna tell you a little bit about how uh, Maryland and what you can look for in the key reporting um, and MOC requirements. Hey, thanks, Tracy. Um, 
Yeah, so Tracy actually covered um, a lot of really great detail there and really kind of got into the uh, the nitty gritty about um, you know the the specific levels of reporting and how they're different um, uh, and how they help you stay compliant. I'll probably paint um, a little bit higher picture and add a little bit more color here. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about was just kind of like metric compliance in general, um, just in case there are folks out there who who don't have a lot of background on metric. Um, I'll share a little bit about that. So um so metric was actually the uh the inventory tracking system that was purchased by the state of colorado um, in january 2014 when they rolled out the very first legal cannabis state um, and since then metric has been purchased and deployed in uh three additional states uh colorado uh, alaska and maryland so maryland is actually the fourth metric launch um, and there's some very large benefits to being the fourth um, most of the kinks have already been worked out um, and a lot of best practices have been established on how to work with metric and stay compliant. That being said, um, you folks in Maryland uh, are actually kind of um, a little bit special in the sense that you will be the first people using metric for patient tracking um, and for tracking patient limits. And Tracy kind of mentioned a little bit about that um, in her slide. So in Maryland, metric is a compliant solution that is tracking all the cannabis by plant, real time, um, and it's also tracking it by patient. Um, so there's a little bit of context there for um, the system that you guys will be using to stay compliant with the MMCC. Um, Tracy, next slide, please. And as she mentioned, um, there's kind of like five main buckets um, of MMCC reporting that you're going to be required to do on a daily basis. And so these activities are listed right here um, and those first two, the receiving and the sales pieces, are really kind of the areas where um, the water can get a little bit muddied uh, between um, how a point of sale software can help you um, and what you have to do in metric manually. And so I thought I'd drill in just a little bit more on this and add a little bit of color to what Tracy had mentioned. Um, the receiving component is especially important when you're talking about uh, metric integration, staying compliant. Um, one of the hardest things about your job running a retail store is that you've got two business systems or two systems essentially. One is your point of sale system, um, which is your business system. And then the other is metric, which is an inventory system that's maintained by the state. And so keeping those two systems in sync is, is a very difficult um, and costly uh, endeavor. Integration between those two platforms is something that is uh, fully possible via the metric API. Um, that API is live in, um, uh, in Maryland. We have customers who are using it and uh, receiving is possible on that API. So if you're out there and you're worried about having to manually enter all of your uh, packages when you're doing receiving, um, that is something that should be able to be automated for you. Sales, um, reporting, do you have, yeah, there we go. Uh, reporting of the sales on a daily basis, that is kind of an area where uh, getting into the details can um, literally mean a very significant difference in the way your store operates. Um, the metric API does allow for um, patient IDs to be uh, picked up from the API so that third-party software can pull out that current sales allotment, um, their sales limit. And then just uh, in the same way that you can pull that, um, that sales limit, after the sale, it is also possible via the API to um, record the amount of the sale. That way, if that patient were to leave your shop and walk down the street or go to another dispensary, um, you could be uh, fulfilling your compliance obligations by reporting to metric real time what that uh, patient purchased. Go ahead, Tracy. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, you can, you can kind of get a sense that this is a very complex ecosystem to maintain compliance when you have multiple inventory systems, but there's some, definitely uh, some key survival tips and best practices, as I mentioned earlier, um, that folks have developed uh, and, and third-party vendors have developed in other uh, markets. Um, one of the first and most important ones is barcoding everything. Um, the kind of most critical position that you can have in your store, uh, kind of the cornerstone of your compliance operation, is having a very, very tight intake process. Uh, if your inventory manager can ensure that you only receive accurate product in the receiving bay and everything is barcoded appropriately and you're only releasing um, clean barcoded product to the sales floor, that's gonna pretty much get you 90, 95% of the way to running a completely compliant shop, even if you're a very, very busy dispensary. 
Um, and the way you get that, uh, that other 10 to 10 to 5% of compliance is by having a regular audit schedule. Um, it doesn't have to be something really intense like uh, overnight audits on a weekly basis. Uh, it can just kind of be like a rolling um, audit of different products um, on a month to two month uh, time frame. Maybe you audit all of your pre-rolls on Monday uh, and then the next week you audit all of your edibles, something like that, as long as it's regular. Um, and then kind of those last two pieces you see there, um, it is extremely, extremely difficult to uh, man maintain metric compliance manually. Um, it is possible, but it requires a lot of time and a lot of labor. So automating state reporting with third-party software is key, and then making sure that third-party software has full integration um, with all the metric API endpoints. Very, very critical. And then just the last little plug in here, uh, labeling does matter. Um, the state takes it very, very seriously. If they're not doing it right now, right when the market launches, they will eventually start taking it seriously and uh, send agents into your shop to buy product and inspect those labels. Um, so all of these requirements are laid out in Comar. Um, and this will be something that you would want to check off, you know, in talking with third party vendors, your options here are essentially to do manual labels and have your um, patient consultants literally like writing out patient labels at the point of sale. As Tracy mentioned, that's not really what you want their job to be. Their job is to make happy customers. And so um, finding a technology solution that can print out those patient labels uh, and those package labels with all the compliant information is really going to save you a lot of stress down the road. And with that, um, I'll hand it over to, uh, to our customer and our partner, Andy Grossman, um, with GTI, uh, also known as RISE. Hi, Andy. Thanks so much Hello, for everybody. coming today. Hi, can you hear us? Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. Yep. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Hello. So, Great. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your store and your brand. Uh, so we have the Rise brand, um, and so we, we would like everyone to come into the store and have the same experience, whether they're in Nevada or in Maryland. Um, so they'll look and feel the, the same exact way, uh, no matter where you go, same customer service, same experience for the patient uh, throughout the country. Awesome. So you were there on day one in Maryland, and you experienced the rush. What was it like on day one? So it was an exciting day. Uh, it was a very festive day. People were very excited and anxious to be able to get uh, access to quality medicine. Uh, the, the lines were long, uh, but fortunately, because of our systems that we had in place, we were able to get people through very quickly. Um, you know, green bits, uh, the integration with metric made it seamless. Uh, so, you know, day one, worst case scenario, the average wait time was about an hour, uh, which was significantly better than other dispensaries throughout the state. This sounds so exciting. Um, so you, you mentioned this, uh, you have a dispensary in Nevada, and now obviously you're opening one in Maryland. So what are the benefits that you found from running a previous dispensary and, and how did it help you um, to prepare for opening one here in Maryland? Yeah, so we're, we're a multi-state operator. We have licenses in five states. And so when we go into a new market like Maryland, as we hire a manager to you know, run our, one of our facilities, we'll have them go out to another one of our facilities. So before we launched in Maryland, the manager went out to Nevada which just so happened was, was also rolling out green bits as well. So they, they got to see it firsthand and understand the, the procedures and processes that we went through uh, so that they were ready for day one. Fantastic. I, we actually had someone ask, how long were the lines on your first day? Uh, well, there was a there was a lot of people that were there waiting. We served donuts and coffee for everyone, and we had pizza in the afternoon. Um, I I was working inside, so I wasn't paying attention to how long the actual lines were. But uh, there was a significant amount of people there uh, throughout the day uh, and every day thereafter. So I would want to stay in your line. <laughs> 
And uh, so I would love to hear a little bit about your experience using GreenBits. Like how did it help you, main, you know, stay compliant, help you focus, you know, on the integration with metric? So yeah, so you, you touched upon it uh, earlier in the call, but I, I can't emphasize enough how important the integration is with metric. And the fact that GreenBits integrates seamlessly with metric is a huge, huge, huge advantage um, and, and made my life a lot easier uh, in running the dispensary. Uh, additionally, the, uh, the, the system is extremely intuitive. You could put someone on there that has never seen the system before and be able to ring up a sale. Um, you know, everything, as you said, was bar is barcoded if you're doing it properly. So it's as simple as clicking on the barcode, clicking it on it, and then all your receipts come out, all the stickers that you have to have, that notify the state for some reason someone's pulled over, you have to have their their name, their MMCC number on the on the uh, on each piece of merchandise that they purchase. Um, so that's all seamless with GreenBits. It makes it really easy. All of those labels are printed out. You can sticker it out right away. And uh, again, it's really intuitive and easy to use. The the, the fact that it uh, is seamless with the integration with Metric allows us not to worry about overselling a, a patient or selling to someone who's not a patient of, of the state. It's all linked to metric and there's been no issues to date uh, as a result from a compliance perspective. And I have one last question before I open it up. I, I see some people have follow-up questions for you. Um, but what is, you know, we know that you're passionate about helping the industry and are really focused on Maryland initiatives and Maryland medical patients. So not just because you're green with this customer, but what is your advice for any new dispensary owners on how to help them stay successful? Uh, focus on compliance. At the end of the day, a compliant operation wins and compliance is the number one thing that you need to focus on. And if you're not compliant, you can lose your license. And so if, if you focus on compliance and make sure everything's compliance, uh, that will lead to a successful operation. Awesome. So I'm going to open it up here at the end. Um, uh, one person asked, Shane Mayberry asked, was everyone in your line able to receive products at the end of the day on your very first day? Yes. Yes. That's Every awesome. single person. And I know that some places they had it, but for you, you were able to get through everyone in your line, right? Yep. Um, uh, and uh, Steve Austin asked, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to save these until the end. I'm going to do a quick wrap up and then I'm going to open up Q&A. So what, what did we go over today? We went over some of the top concerns um, and how GreenBits addresses those. Um, Matt went into way more detail on what you can expect specifically within Maryland. Do we went over some labeling requirements? And Andy was not kind enough to just share how they're using GreenBits to better support their needs. Um, so you can uh, sign up. We're going to send this to you, and we'll send it in a follow-up email as well. But if you like what you saw um, and you are excited and you want to learn more, please request a demo with us. We're happy to show you in way more detail and show you the ins and outs of our product. So you'll, you'll see a little uh, www.greenbits.com slash demo. That's how you can sign up. And again, we'll send you a link in a follow-up email. So now we're going to open up a QA. and a It looks like, uh, Andy, another one is open to you. Um, what were the biggest obstacles you faced during your first week? I, I wouldn't say I faced the obstacles uh, the, the first week. Uh, you know, it was... I was very pleased with the way everything operated uh, with our employees, with the systems that we had in place. Um, so things things could not have gone smoother, in my opinion. Awesome. So, uh, what dangers come with owning a dispensary without it being federally legal? And I'm going to open this one up to either Matt or you, Andy, if you know the answer. I'll let Matt go. Oh man, I was going to punt that one to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, um, yeah, you're kind of getting into the po political realm there. Uh, and over there in Maryland, you're really close to, um, to kind of, you know, the federal capital. Um, 
I think, you know, probably like, you know, there are dangers of being shut down if there is some sort of a crackdown on, um, uh, from, on the federal level. Um, but, you know, from everything that kind of we've seen from our side, at least, you know, kind of the positioning of the existing states that have legalized dispensaries, um, uh, Washington and Colorado, those regulators in those states really protect uh, their license holders. Um, and so, you know, that, that's probably something to look to is uh, how the MMCC and, uh, and the state is um, planning on protecting the license holders. Um, probably not a really great answer there. <laughs> um, so, uh, Andy, if you, if you have a better answer or, or more thoughts on the subject, feel free to respond. Uh, the, the only other thing I would say is you are operating in a state where it is legal for medical purposes. And as long as you're compliant, you should be okay. Uh, you know, the, the key is being compliant within the highly regulated system that the state of Maryland has set up. And I remember you mentioned in a previous conversation how it's, it's an industry effort, right? With anybody who opens up at a new market, if everyone is focused on compliance and it, you do it all together, it tends to help relax some of the fears because it is more fear-based. Right? Um, I have another question for you, Andy. Were most of the patients um, that you were working with on your first day, first week, uh, already registered with RISE? Uh, no, uh, the majority of them were not registered. Uh, we did all the registrations while they were waiting in line. And how did you go about training your bud tenders to make sure they were ready? Uh, well, we, we, we call them patient care specialists. Um, and we, you know, train them um, the same way we train all of our employees and make sure that they're fully aware of all the uh, rules and regulations for the state and make sure that they're doing everything from a compliance perspective. Um, that, 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 that to me is the key to, to training, making sure they understand uh, that we are working in a highly regulated business and they need to make sure that they're following all the protocols that are necessary. There are a couple um, stops you can put in place as well, uh, Stephen. Um, like you can put, we have what's called the warning sales warnings and you can make it where n none of your bud tenders can bypass that. Um, so there are, right on the register itself, uh, to go along with the training that you do, there are some additional um, stops that will help you, uh, you stay compliant and for the bud tenders to keep track of compliance as well. Um, I have um, a green, this is towards GreenBits. So Matt, this is for you. How many customers are using GreenBits in, um, uh, overall and, and who are in the pipeline and using GreenBits right now in Maryland? Yeah, um, yeah, that question is a little bit open-ended. I think on the slide deck, we, we referenced um, a little bit around 800 uh, retail customers across the country. I believe in Maryland, and I don't know exactly, I think that there's at least three to four uh, dispensaries that are up and running using the system. I think uh, Remedy Columbia was opening up maybe this week or early next week. Um, so yeah, the number is, uh, is probably about three to four that are up and running in Maryland right now. And uh, a lot of folks, I think about a dozen, will be opening up with GreenBits at some point uh, over the next uh, month or two. Awesome. Um, a follow-up question for you, Andy. Uh, Shane Mayberry asks, was training, um, your training in-house with in-house sources or did you use an outside company or an outside course? It was all in-house. Awesome. And then Matt, this more is for GreenBits. Uh, you talked about real-time reporting here in Maryland. Can you elaborate what GreenBits does on this front with quote unquote real-time reporting? Yeah. Um, real-time reporting, that's a great question. It, it kind of goes into several different areas. It's really kind of the core product uh, or core service that we provide. Um, so there's kind of a couple different levels. There's real-time reporting in the sense of providing you with um, business reporting in green bits uh, that shows things like sales, taxes, um, patient sales, um, all sorts of different uh, live real-time reporting of what's happening in the dispensary. 
Um, and then there's real-time reporting to the state, uh, which is a compliance feature. And I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more just on that front. Um, so in green bits, uh, and, and just in general, one of the unique requirements for folks in Maryland is that after the sale, um, you have to, one way or another, get that sales information into metric associated with the patient. Because in Maryland, the patient sales limit is a rolling average based on uh, a current allotment and time. Um, so if you do not get that sales information into metric right after the sale, there's the potential that they could go down the street to another dispensary um, and potentially sell over the limit because you did not update that limit in metric. Um, and that's kind of the core compliance aspect of our real-time reporting. Once that sale is rung up, we go to metric for you um, and record that sale. So um, it's updating the patient record in metric as well as updating inventory so that metric will now see that if you sold that patient uh, five grams of product, you will not, you will no longer have five grams of product in metric that will be uh, reduced uh, for the sale. Um, so that's kind of the, kind of the compliance aspect of the real time reporting. And then GreenBits also does stuff with, uh, with live inventory and real time reporting to services like Leafly, Weed Maps, um, and other menu sites. So that's kind of another way that your uh, inventory can be real time reported. Hopefully, one of those was the, the answer you were looking for. <laughs> and what, um, what happens from a bud tender's perspective if, let's say, a patient is trying to purchase something, but they reach their carry limit, right? We check for them, we see they've reached it. What does it look like? And that's more for you, Matt, if you know the answer. What was that question again? If, a, if a, or Andy, if you know the answer too, um, if we're able to check and we see, oh, you've reached your carry limit for a certain patient, what happens from, uh, for the bud tenders? Like what, what is their view when that happens? Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, I can answer that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure, Andy, if you've experienced this yet in, in your store. But what will happen if, um, if a, a patient consultant tries to sell over the limit to a patient or over their, their current allotment is a window will pop up on the register, a warning window that'll just say, hey, um, you're selling over the limit. This is the limit. Um, and then depending how you've set up your system in green bits, um, that patient consultant could either bypass that warning um, or if they try to bypass it, it could require a manager's override. Probably the best practice um, to prevent uh, a mistake is to make sure that only your top level managers or owners uh, can bypass those warnings. All right, does anyone else have any additional questions? Oh yep, Manish just came in. So has GreenBits, have GreenBit servers ever been hacked? And what precaution do you take to prevent hacking? Matt, do you want to take this one? Um, can you repeat that question again, Tracy? I'm not able to see where these are coming in. Absolutely. So Manish has asked, um, what has, have GreenBit servers ever been hacked? And what precaution do you take to prevent hacking? Oh, gotcha. Great, great question, Manish. Um, so GreenBit servers have never been hacked. Um, we, our, our servers are based on Amazon Web Services, um, which is one of the uh, uh, industry leaders um, in um, cloud services uh, and, and security. So um, there's never been a hack. Um, we have also kind of taken steps. Our engineering team has actually contracted with a service called HackerOne. Uh, and that's a really cool program uh, that a lot of larger technology companies use. And what they actually do is we pay them um, and they're essentially professional hackers to try to hack our program. And then instead of exploiting those um, vulnerabilities or any vulnerabilities that they would find, they actually just report them to us. Um, and then we fix those vulnerabilities. So we've been, I think, using that program for about uh, a half of a year now, something on the order of that. Yeah, so if you wanna know more, also if you go to, we've never been hacked, and you can go to greenbits.com slash security, and it goes through our security policy and our resources because data security is a number one priority for our um, team. We partnered with HackerOne, we're working with a bug bounty program, like Matt said, in April 2017, and you went a little into that. And some another uh, things that we use are penetration testing, 
So um, what that is, is an attempt to evaluate the security of an IT infrastructure by safely trying to exploit vulnerabilities. And they may exist in any operating system, services and application flows, or any improper configurations or risky end user behavior. So these assessments are always really good in validating, uh, validating the efficacy of defensive mechanisms, as well as end user adherence to security policies. So we're starting to do those types of testings, and we just have very strong data policies from backups and physical sec security um, every five minutes. We run uh, binary logs, and we have very strong infrastructure. Like Matt mentioned, we have AWS, and we have really great network architecture. If you want to get really into the nitty-gritty of it, you can go to greenbits.com security. All right, so I think that's the end of the Q&A, unless someone wants to jump on for one more. It's really great questions, everyone. And we're happy to answer them for you. And we're especially happy. Thank you so much, Andy, for coming today. I know My that pleasure. You're in, your insights are invaluable. And Matt, thank you for taking your time to go over exactly what you know about the Maryland market. If you are excited about what you see or if you're nervous and you want to learn how we can help you quell some of your nerves, um, request a GreenBits demo. You know, we, we're here. Our, goal is to help cannabis retailers thrive. We want to make this easier for you. Our passion is to help the um, industry succeed. So you can request a demo right with us uh, at www.greenbits.com slash demo. And uh, we will be sending a recording of this video. So thank you everyone who's joined and uh, we'll, um, happy to have you.